Hello everyone and welcome to a game that uh, I consider uh, a top privilege just to be able to share it with everyone. Uh, it is from the 1973 Leningrad Championship and it features uh, uh, Alexander Shashin with White versus uh, Viktor Korchnoi. Now this is the first time we're featuring Alexander Shashin on the channel as uh, although he's not that well known nowadays as a player he was very very strong at the time he was Soviet master of chess which uh, can be considered as... Um, uh, well, in those days, a, an incredibly strong player and was one of the stronger players, uh, players at the tournament. Uh, the tournament featured players like uh, Viktor Korchnoi, Mark Taimanov and some other uh, strong players, 14 altogether, I believe, and it was a double round robin. And uh, if you would think that, okay, maybe Viktor had a bad tournament or a bad game, no, Viktor played this game excellently and he won the tournament, but uh, still... Of course, there is a reason why I'm showing you this uh, this particular game. And uh, as I've never heard of Alexander Shashin, maybe I've just heard the name, but nothing other than that. Uh, he also wrote a book. And after seeing this game, uh, I decided to order the book. Now, uh, I, I will, once it arrives, I, I didn't want to have just a di digital version. I ordered the hardcover uh, because I'm really excited about this book. And I will share uh, if, you know, if it's good at all, but after seeing this game and after checking what the book is about, I mean, it has to be absolutely spectacular. This is the book I'm talking about. It's called Best Play, A New Method for Discovering the Strongest Move by Alexander Shashin. And he uh, features, what he features in the book is uh, positions from the games of Tal, Capablanca and Tigran Petrosian. And uh, some, uh, I think it, it features like 125 positions, uh, you know, with uh, with uh, the uh, games from these three incredible uh, world champions. So you have attack, maneuver, and defend. And it seems like he he perfected or sort of created the the triforce of chess. If you have Tal, Petrosian, and Capablanca. Uh, you've pretty much covered everything. Uh, so I'm very excited about the book. Uh, I'm not trying to sell the book to you or anything. Uh, I, I don't have a link where you can buy it. I'm, I'm just, you know, sharing that. I'm very, very excited about it. And I will tell you if it's a, if it's a nice book. But uh, yeah, let, let's get into this game. And then you will see uh, and understand hopefully why I'm so excited. We're going to we're going to cover many lines this game. And uh, yeah, I know, you know, nowadays uh, chess is uh, more more about the drama than actual chess. But it's still important to, you know, feature classical chess games and remember why we started playing chess in the first place. So so let's check it out. Uh, you, you guys will love this one. OK, so Alexander Shashin with white opens with pawn to d4. Uh, we have knight to f6 by Victor and pawn to c4. We have pawn to e6, knight to c3, and bishop to b4. Uh, Victor goes for the Nimzo Indian defense. And I didn't really introduce Victor Korchnoi, as I imagine all of you know who he is. But, uh, I mean, he played chess his entire life. He played chess well into his 80s. He played twice for the World Chess Championship title uh, against uh, Anatoly Karpo. It was a really tough match. And since he d d defected from the Soviet Union, in like 19 maybe 76 as this was played in 1973 uh, it was a uh, you know pretty pretty uh big po political match and uh yeah yeah i mean he was an incredible player uh he's no longer uh with us but uh you know we always um like to like to remember how he how he lived and played uh but yeah okay let's continue the game uh bishop b4 we have pawn to e3 this is the sort of the normal way of uh playing against the nimzo indian uh we have castles and bishop to d3 uh we have pawn to c5 uh, and knight to f3 all been played before nothing new here the so-called hibna variation uh, pawn to d5 the gligoric system and now castles kingside we have knight to c6 and pawn to a3 uh, c captures on d4 e captures and bishop captures on c3 this all was well known at the time uh, b captures on c3 and now d captures on c4 bishop captures uh, uh, and queen to a5 okay putting pressure on the c3 pawn and there are some moves that have been played here, uh, even in 1973 when this uh, was played uh, in the championship of Leningrad. And the bishop to b2, I believe, uh, is a new move uh, in this game. Now, there are other positions that, 
I have this exact move, but that have been played some 10, 20, 30 years after this game was played. So I believe bishop to b2 or somewhere around bishop to b2, we had a, a completely new position. But okay, it's still not a unique position if you look at today's databases. Uh, okay, pawn to e5 by Victor. We have rook to e1 and bishop to g4, pinning the knight, threatening pawn to e4. So pawn to h3 asking, okay, what do you do with the bishop? Do you go back or do you capture? If you go back, you kind of have to worry about about pawn to g4. So Victor does the uh, correct uh, uh, move. He plays bishop captures on f3, queen captures and rook a to d8. We have bishop to a2 and now rook to d7. And if you look at this position, this is now a completely unique position. There is no position uh, that is uh, like this one in any database online. So you could also consider this a completely new game if you want. Uh, okay, we have rook to e2. Victor wants to double up on the d file. Uh, Alexander says, all right, I will double up on the e file. So rook f to d8 and rook a to e1. E captures on d4 and C captures on d4. And now the first real question of this game. It's move 19 and we, we reach our first question. Why is Alexander giving up the d4 pawn? Well, he's not really. If you look at what happens if you capture the pawn, then bishop captures and after rook captures, there's this very nasty rook to e8 with check. And now you realize, oh, oh, we've forgotten about our good friend the bishop on a2. And now rook captures, rook captures with check, uh, knight captures, and now you get checkmated. Queen captures king h8 and queen captures on e8. So the pawn is defended by this nasty tactic. So Victor, of course, sees this. Uh, Victor sees everything. We have queen to b6 uh, and now queen to c3. Again, inviting the, 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 the capture of the pawn. And now Victor does it because it's the only move that can be played. Otherwise, d5 is coming and black uh, it, it will be doomed. So knight captures on d4. And now, how do you react to this? Okay, Victor grabs the pawn. The rook on e2 is hanging. You could just move it. You could play rook to e3. You could play rook to e5. But Alexander goes rook to e7. Okay. The f7 pawn is now hanging. We have to deal with that. Rook captures on e7. Rook captures on e7. And now, how do you defend um, the f7 pawn? It's not uh, definitely not an easy task because the queen and the rook are stuck guarding the knight on d4. So you can't really use the queen or the rook. You could play something like knight to e6, but if you play knight to e6, uh, then you're kind of stuck there for for the rest of the game. And uh, white, white can even go for something like queen to b3. And it's going to be a very, very annoying position to get out of. Plus, you have a rook on e7. Uh, Victor does not uh, w w want to play against uh, a, a pig. Uh, so knight to f5, he goes after the rook, invites bishop captures or rook captures on f7. And now the question is, can the pawn be captured? Well, yes, it can, but only with the rook. The idea of bishop captures on f7 isn't so impressive because after king to f8 attacking both pieces you will play okay rook e5 you will try to win the knight here but now rook to d1 check and after king h2 queen captures on f2 and now there is really nothing better than to just trade queen to c8 with check king captures and queen captures on f5 which will force a queen trade and now okay uh you uh, uh, victor would be up a pawn uh Maybe not enough to win, but, uh, you know, for, for Victor, probably enough to win. So Rook captures on F7, now threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries. And now I just want you to pay close attention at, at, at how long uh, this Bishop-Rook-King relationship lasts uh, <laughs> throughout this game. Rook to D1 check by Victor. Okay, King to H2, only move. Or Queen to E1, but that's just weird. So King to H2, and now comes Queen to D6 with check. And here, this is the last moment in the game where Victor probably could uh, fend off the attack. And the move needed was knight to g4 check. Uh, specifically because uh, h captures on g4 is the only move. So you have to do it because now after h captures, uh, queen to d6 with check. Uh, this is the move that, that gets played. Uh, giving check to the white king. You could also consider queen to h6 with check, but then queen to h3 stops uh, your attack. So you have to play after knight captures queen to d6 with check, and now you have to play not pawn to g3. Pawn to g3 would actually prevent queen to h3, and if pawn to g3, then queen to h6 check, followed by queen to h1 will be checkmate. But there is the annoying defense of queen to g3, and now, uh, okay, you, you give up the queen, but... Uh, 
it doesn't really do all that much. There is a rook to d7 check now, opening up a discovery. And this is the only move that keeps white in the game. But it's such a spectacular line. I thought you guys uh, needed to, to see it. King to f8. Bishop captures and g7 with check. King to e8. And now rook captures and d6. And look at this now. Rook to f1 with check. King to g1. You want to go after the knight. So if rook captures rook, you will capture the knight here. And now there is nothing better for Victor than to play knight to d2 check and just uh, force a perpetual uh, king to h2 knight to f1 check if you go off the board then you can just capture the rook the white king has to attack the knight K king to g1 knight to d2 check and we would have a repetition here now no doubt victor uh you know as strong as he was saw this and he wanted to win the game and he played queen to d6 with check now in terms of uh what the engine says about this uh, queen to d6 is the second top move recommended by the engine. So, I mean, you you, could, you do not expect anything less from Viktor Korchnoi. Uh, but it is not enough. Pawn to g3, and now knight to g4 with check. He starts a beautiful, beautiful attack. And uh, again, you cannot capture it. If you capture just queen to h6 with check, followed by queen to h1 checkmate. So, king to g2, now knight to h4 check. He tries to sacrifice a second knight, and this one has to be accepted as the white king has no squares. The queen and the rook and knight are taking care of everything. So, g captures on h4, and queen to h2 check. We have king to f3, and now look at this queen captures an f2 and now uh, d can you even believe that uh, not only can white uh, defend this but that white is actually winning here uh, and uh, not if you capture the knight uh, you have to escape with king to e4 if you capture the knight then you just go after the the white king rook to g1 check and there's nothing if king to h5 just uh, well we can even show it like g6 um and queen to h4 checkmate and if you defend with the queen which uh, you know okay uh, makes the game last a little bit longer but okay after king to h5 still there's nothing you still have to be a little bit careful because whenever this rook moves there will be a discovery to the black king but there is the sneaky queen to e2 check and after you block with rook to f3 opening up a discovery from the bishop king to h8 and now white would love to bring back the rook to deliver checkmate but the rook is pinned and there's just nothing more to be done here. Bishop to d5 can be played, but now you just capture everything. And of course, the position is now completely winning for Victor. So after queen captures an f2 check, king to e4. And now uh, we reach uh, a moment where th th there is perhaps a possibility for Victor to survive this. But I guess uh, he either didn't see it or he decided that, uh, well, maybe he will still win the game if white doesn't play perfect moves uh, but uh, for this particular game alexander shashin uh, decided to play perfect moves and the queen to e2 is what victor played now i will just show you how com complicated a defense uh, you, you have to create here rook to e1 check king to d5 and now after rook to d1 check king to c4 king captures on f7 and now h captures on g4 the only move that gives white the advantage King to e8, you unpin from the bishop here, and now queen to e5 with check. For example, king to d7, queen captures and g7 check. King to c6, queen to f6 check. You force a queen trade because the white king could also easily get in trouble. And after you trade here, captures and captures, you have two bishops versus a rook. And yes, the two bishops are better, but the rook is not helpless here. Not... Uh, uh, not, not, not at all. And okay, white is pushing for the win. Whether white would win, it, it would have to be seen. But after queen t2 check, Victor could not continue in the strongest fashion. He played, uh, well, uh, after king t4, he played queen t2 check instead of rook t1 check. And now you have king to f4. That is the move. Interestingly, if you play king to f5, you run into this very nasty knight to h6 check. We can even show it. I mean, uh, the lines in this game are so, so disgusting. Let's say king to f4, rook to f1 check, king to g3, rook to g1 check, king to f4, queen to f2 with check, king to e4, and now queen to e1 with check. You have to force a queen trade uh, uh, to, to also be able to deliver check, or if king to f3, now you play queen captures and c3 check. And after uh, bishop captures, you'll play knight captures and f7, and now you, you no longer have to worry about this. Um, a pin here it's just the knight and rook versus the bishop pair you're gonna move the king and it's easily winning for black but after queen t2 check king back to f4 and now look at this this is the problem rook to f1 check king to g5 uh alexander hides his king behind victor's knight 
Pawn to h6, check, and now look at this, king to g6, even king, even the white king joins the attack, I mean, this is just, uh, look at, uh, I hope you guys are measuring how long this relationship lasts here, I mean, it's the, the longest relationship that ever lasted. Uh, knight to e5, check, if you try some other moves, um, and there are many to consider, like, uh, let, let's say, queen to a6 check. It, it, it's also a possibility. The problem is you just move the rook with check. So even though the rook never moves, it's always a possibility, and it's always delivered with a deadly purpose. And after king to h8, something like queen to c8 will be checkmate. So after king to g6, knight to e5 check. This is one last attempt. Victor tries before uh, throwing in the towel. Queen captures on e5, and now rook to g1 with check. Uh, trading queens also doesn't help. If you trade, let's say, captures uh, on e5, there's rook captures on f1 with a discovery on the king. And now after king to h8, rook to f8 is just checkmate. So even that will not help you. So rook to g1, uh, uh, check was played, and now we have queen to g5. This is the, the, the you know, the, the cherry on top of this game. Uh, but... Uh, other moves are, are also uh, okay, unless uh, you want to win the game. So you can play king to f5, but you will not win. Like if king to f5, uh, the idea is queen to f2 check, and after queen to f4, queen captures on b2. Now you have discoveries, just not very good ones. And after, let's say, rook to f8 with check, king captures on f8, uh, queen to d6 with check, and now it's a draw. You are no longer winning this game. For example, king to e8, queen to e6 check, and the black king will never allow the, let's say, bishop to e6 to come with check. You will try to run away, but uh, uh, that's pretty much it. You, you'll never uh, put your king on a light square. So after rook to g1 check, queen to g5, the only winning move for Alexander, uh, and that's it. There's nothing more to be done. If you capture the queen, which of course uh, can be done, then just h captures on g5, and now after queen captures on b2, uh, look at this beauty. Rook captures on b7 with check. And now if you move the king, you lose the queen. And if you capture the bishop, which is delivering the check, then rook to b8 is checkmate. I mean, th this game just keeps on giving, and uh, I mean, I feel bad for having this channel so long without showing you this game. Uh, queen captures on b2 was played, and now rook captures on g7, and it was in this position on move 35 that Viktor Korchnoi resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So it was the 1973 Leningrad Championship, uh, Viktor Korchnoi won the tournament, he played brilliantly the entire tournament, he played brilliantly in this game, only Alexander Shashin played even more brilliantly. I don't know what uh, word is, you know, beyond brilliant, but he played like that. Uh, and yeah, here you resign because it's a double check from the bishop and from the rook, and wherever you put the king, if you put the rook to, to, to f8, then rook to g8 is checkmate as queen covers the e7 square, and if you play king to h8, then king to g, rook to g8 or rook to h7. Uh, is uh, still checkmate. So yeah, uh, rook captures on g7. It's interesting that, uh, you know, the this relationship was broken at the moment uh, Victor resigned the game. So it was, you know, it, it lasted until checkmate. I mean, what a beautiful game and what uh, what a beautiful maneuver what what spectacular game by alexander and uh, th that's why after i saw this game i i said uh, well if someone who played this game against victor korchnoi uh, in form victor korchnoi who won the tournament uh, wrote a book uh, uh, th that he has some sort of a new method for discovering the strongest move i mean uh, i believe him i i i really believe the the uh, the guy i mean uh like I said, I, I will w once it uh, arrives, I will go through it, uh, you know, uh, go through a couple of games and uh, I'll give you, you know, everything I think about the book. And if you guys also feel strongly about it, you, you can acquire it. Uh, so, you know, maybe, maybe it can improve your, your game as well. But I'm, I'm, I'm already, you know, uh, very much looking forward to, to improving my, my, my game. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry for a bit of a longer video, but I mean, you've seen the lines. Uh, I could have shown you many more. I, I only decided to show you the, the nicest ones. So hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to thank an anonymous person, uh, Grandmaster Uncle Moves Only, Ranko Djugashevich, Nishan Travi, and GrzniChessFestival.org.gg for a contribution to my channel. Uh, thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.